This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1836, How to Disarm Internal Triggers and Improve Focus, by Nir Eyal of nirandfar.com. And I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick, reading you blogs every single day of the year to help you live a more meaningful life. I get permission from authors of the best articles I can find online and then simply read them to you for free. For now, let's hear another post as we optimize your life. How to Disarm Internal Triggers and Improve Focus by Nir Eyal of nirandfar.com. While we can't control the feelings and thoughts that pop into our heads, we can control what we do with them. Research of smoking cessation programs performed by Dr. Jonathan Bricker of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center suggests we shouldn't keep telling ourselves to stop thinking about an urge. Instead, we must learn better ways to cope. The same applies to other distractions like checking our phones too much, eating junk food, or excessive shopping. Rather than trying to fight the urge, we need new methods to handle intrusive thoughts. The following four steps help us do just that. Step one, look for the discomfort that precedes the distraction, focusing in on the internal trigger. A common problem I have while writing is the urge to Google something. It's easy to justify this bad habit as doing research, but deep down I know it's often just a diversion from difficult work. Bricker advises focusing on the internal trigger that precedes the unwanted behavior, like your feeling anxious, having a craving, feeling restless, or thinking you are incompetent. Step two, write down the trigger. Dr. Bricker advises writing down the trigger whether or not you subsequently give in to the distraction. He recommends noting the time of day and what you were doing. In addition, it's important to note how you felt when you noticed the internal trigger that led to the distracting behavior as soon as you are aware of the behavior because it's easier at that point to remember how you felt. According to Bricker, while people can easily identify the external trigger, it takes some time and trials to begin noticing those all-important inside triggers. He recommends discussing the urge as if you were an observer, telling yourself something like, I'm feeling that tension in my chest right now, and there I go, trying to reach for my iPhone. The better we are at noticing the behavior, the better we'll be at managing it over time. The anxiety goes away, the thought gets weaker or is replaced, by another thought. Step three, explore your sensations. Bricker then recommends getting curious about that sensation. For example, do your fingers twitch when you're about to be distracted? Do you get a flurry of butterflies in your stomach when you think about work when you're with your kids? What does it feel like when the feelings crest and then subside? Bricker encourages staying with the feeling before acting on the impulse. When similar techniques were applied in a smoking cessation study, the participants who learn to acknowledge and explore their cravings manage to quit at double the rate of those in the American Lung Association's best performing cessation program. One of Bricker's favorite techniques is the leaves on a stream method. When feeling the uncomfortable internal trigger to do something you'd rather not, imagine you are seated beside a gently flowing stream, he says. Quote, then imagine there are leaves floating down that stream. Place each thought in your mind on each leaf. It could be a memory, a word, a worry, an image, and let each of those leaves float down that stream, swirling away as you sit and just watch, end quote. Step four, beware of liminal moments. Liminal moments are transitions from one thing to another throughout our days. Have you ever picked up your phone while waiting for a traffic light to change then found yourself still looking at your phone while driving or opened a tab in your web browser felt annoyed by how long it took to load and opened up another page while you waited, or checked a social media app while walking from one meeting to the next only to keep scrolling when you got back to your desk. There's nothing wrong with any of these actions per se. Rather, what's dangerous is that by doing them for just a second, we're likely to do things we later regret, like getting off track for half an hour or getting into a car accident. A technique I found particularly helpful for dealing with this distraction trap is the 10-minute rule. If I find myself wanting to check my phone as a pacification device, I tell myself it's fine to give in, but not right now. I have to wait just 10 minutes. This technique is effective at helping me deal with many potential distractions, like Googling something rather than writing, eating something unhealthy when I'm bored, or watching another episode on Netflix when I'm too tired to go to bed. This rule 
allows time to do what some behavioral psychologists call surfing the urge. When an urge takes hold, noticing the sensations and riding them like a wave, neither pushing them away nor acting on them, helps us cope until the feelings subside. Surfing the urge, along with other techniques to bring attention to the craving, has been shown to reduce the number of cigarettes smokers consumed when compared to those in a control group who didn't use the technique. If we still want to perform the action after 10 minutes of urge surfing, we're free to do it, but that's rarely the case. The liminal moment has passed, and we're able to do the thing we really wanted to do. Techniques like surfing the urge and thinking of our cravings as leaves on a stream are mental skill-building exercises that can help us stop impulsively giving in to distractions. They recondition our minds to seek relief from internal triggers in a reflective rather than a reactive way. As Oliver Berkman wrote in The Guardian, quote, it's a curious truth that when you gently pay attention to negative emotions, they tend to dissipate, but positive ones expand. You just listened to the post titled How to Disarm Internal Triggers and Improve Focus by Nir Eyal of nearandfar.com. And I'll have some comments, but first, this episode is brought to you by 1010. Now, you may have read about this in the New York Times or Forbes, and we're excited to tell you about it. 1010 is an exclusive collection of 10 one-of-a-kind engagement rings designed by 10 of the most distinctive designers working today. Using only diamonds responsibly sourced from Botswana, 10 design masters have each produced a uniquely beautiful commitment ring launching exclusively on January 18th at bluenile.com. And when they're gone, they're gone. We all know that the diamond engagement ring is iconic. It's a timeless expression of the deepest commitment between two people. And with 1010, it's been beautifully re-envisioned in the hands of 10 modern designers working exclusively with sustainably sourced diamonds. If you're making 2021 plans or on the hunt for the perfect ring to wear forever, you're definitely gonna wanna check this out. Again, this exciting limited edition collection of diamond engagement rings launches on January 18th and you can preview it exclusively at bluenile.com. And great practical tips that we can use from Nier. By the way, Nier is spelled N-I-R, and his site is spelled like that, nearandfar.com, a little play on words there. This is definitely an exercise to try. The quick summary, again, step one, look for the emotion preceding distraction. Step two, write down the internal trigger. Step three, explore the negative sensation with curiosity instead of contempt. And step four, be extra cautious during liminal moments. I love the 10 minute rule, so something to try. These are all quick and simple. You just have to remember to do it. That's the key. So let me know how it goes. Have a great rest of your weekend if you're listening in real time and I'll see you tomorrow for Minimalist Monday, where optimal life awaits.